Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to buy cryptocurrency. And we're going to break this down into three parts. First, choosing an exchange um, where you'll buy your cryptocurrency. Second, how to create your account. And then finally, how to complete your first transaction. So cryptocurrency is a type of digital currency, and each unit is encrypted to manage the generation of the coins or minting and to verify the transactions. And so like any currency, cryptocurrency can be used as a medium of exchange to buy and sell things or to store value. Now you've probably heard of Bitcoin, but there are thousands of cryptocurrency coins as well as many different ways to buy them. So cryptocurrency can be confusing when you're just starting out, but after you've bought your first coin, it will become easier to buy and trade more or to use it as currency if that's what you want to do it for. So, uh, Part one in this process is to choose an exchange. So in order to choose an exchange, the first thing you need to do is find an exchange that will work in your country. So there are hundreds of cryptocurrency exchanges all over the world, but for regulatory reasons, not all exchanges work in all countries. And additionally, exchanges may only take traditional money from certain countries. Generally, uh, you're best served by choosing an exchange that is located within the country where you are. That way, your cryptocurrency is governed by the same laws and regulations that you are. So you can look for a physical address for the exchange to confirm that the exchange is located in your country. Um, and you can typically find this on the exchange's about page on their website that has basic information about the exchange. Um, and if you can't find a physical address, you're probably better off just not using that exchange. There are a lot of choices out there. You can find a better one. Um, second, you want to limit your choices to exchanges that take traditional money. If you're buying cryptocurrency for the first time, you'll have to use traditional money to get started. Um, known as flat currency in crypto circles to buy your coins. For this reason, there's no point in registering with an exchange that only accepts cryptocurrency for payment. Now, you might look at methods of payment as well and think in terms of security. Some exchanges require bank transfers, while others accept PayPal or credit card or debit cards. And while using your credit or debit card for your purchase may be convenient for you, it's also less secure than other methods. Uh, you also want to take note of how long the exchange takes to complete your transaction. If you're comparing two exchanges that are otherwise equal, but one takes over a week to complete the transaction, while other, com other completes the transactions in, say, 24 hours, you'll likely want to go with the second choice. Um, next, you're going to need to decide how do you want to use your cryptocurrency. Now, there are some exchanges that prohibit or limit withdrawal of cryptocurrency from your account. This would be fine if you simply want to buy cryptocurrency as an investment. However, if you plan to use your cryptocurrency regularly to buy goods and services, you'll want an exchange with fewer limitations. So you'll want to consider when the exchange is open to trades and make sure this suits your schedule as well as your intended use of cryptocurrency. For example, if you plan to actively trade cryptocurrency, you may feel more comfortable with an exchange that is open to trading 24-7. If this is your first cryptocurrency purchase, you may not know exactly how you want to use the cryptocurrency, and that's okay. Think in terms of what you might have an interest in doing in the future, and give yourself room to expand as your comfort with crypto grows. Um, next, you're going to want to decide what types of cryptocurrency do you want to buy. If you're just getting started with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, which represents about 47% of the cryptocurrency market, uh, is simple and a safe bet. However, given that there are thousands of other coins available, it's worth looking into at least a few others before you make a final decision. So once you've identified uh, maybe a handful of different coins that you're potentially interested in, check your list of exchanges and cross off any exchanges on your list that don't trade in the cryptocurrencies you want. Uh, number five, compare fees at different exchanges. So there are different types of fees charged by the exchanges, and these can vary widely. The most basic fee is a network or miner fee, which will also be the lowest, typically only a few cents uh, per transaction. So depending on your method of payment, you may also be charged a conversion fee, and this fee can vary anywhere from a half a percent up to 5% of your purchase. 
and is charged by the exchange to convert your flat currency into cryptocurrency. Some exchanges don't charge a conversion fee for funds transferred directly from your bank. You may also be charged transactional fees by the exchange based on your trading volume. So these fees range from 0.1% to 0.5%, with lower fees typically paid by more active traders. So those who buy and sell on the exchange more frequently with more amounts. And number six, you're going to want to evaluate the exchange's user interface. If you can't figure out how to use the exchange, you're not going to get much enjoyment out of trading cryptocurrency. Look for a straightforward, intuitive interface that you can easily navigate. You might also look at the resources the exchange has to educate and guide beginners as they start to trade cryptocurrency. Beginner-friendly exchanges include Coinbase, uh, Sexpoint.io, Coinmama, Coinsquare, Gemini, Kraken, and Shapeshift. So next you're going to want to research the exchange's reputation. Do some research off of the website of the exchange itself to find unbiased articles and reviews. Read about the history of the exchange and its founders. If you can't verify an exchange's legitimacy, don't invest your money there. If the exchange has had security issues or other problems in the past, find out how those problems were addressed. You may have to dig deep to find negative stories that the exchange developers attempt to hide from search results so as not to dissuade potential customers. Don't just look on the first page of search results. Go 10 or 15 pages deep if possible. Next, you're going to want to assess the exchange's security. Exchanges can be vulnerable to hackers, so it's important to thoroughly assess the exchange's security. First and foremost, the site itself should be secure i.e. HTTPS rather than HTTP. Beyond that, personal and financial information you transmit to the site should be encrypted. Find out if the exchange allows for offline storage of cryptocurrency, sometimes called cold storage, and two-factor identification, 2FA. Okay, once you've decided which exchange you're going to use, you're going to want to create an account. So, to do this, you're going to start by gathering the materials you need to verify your identity. Because of the level of security required, setting up an account at a cryptocurrency exchange is a little more involved than setting up your usual account that you might have somewhere online. You'll need to have basic identification and payment information on hand, as well as keep your mobile phone nearby in your email account open. Expect it to take at least 10 minutes to set up your exchange account. For security and privacy, don't start the process in a public place or on a public Wi-Fi network. Next, you're going to have to provide the requested personal information. On the home page of the exchange, click on the button to sign up or create an account. You'll be taken to a form that looks like you things that you filled out in the past. Um, it'll be quite a common thing that you've seen before on any other website. And so for this first step, you'll provide your name, address, phone number, email address, and other basic information. Uh, you might also be asked to choose a username and password at this point. So make sure your password is complicated and secure. So you'll need to verify your email and set up the 2FA. Once your information is received, the exchange will send an email to the address you provided. That email will include a link or a code that you'll use to verify your email address. The exchange also will send a text message to your phone with a code you must enter to access your account. The text message code is part of 2FA. This process will occur every time you log on to your exchange account. Provided you enter your password correctly, the exchange will send a code to your phone. You'll be granted access to your account when you correctly enter the code. Because the verification links and codes are only valid for a brief period of time, it's recommended that you have your phone nearby and your email account open. If you don't see an email within a few minutes, check your spam or your junk folder. Next, you're going to need to upload a government-issued photo ID. To complete the registration process, some exchanges require you to scan both sides of your government-issued photo ID and upload the scanned images to the exchange. Acceptable IDs include a driver's license or a passport. You may be able to purchase small amounts of cryptocurrency without completing this step. However, 
The total amounts of cryptocurrency you can purchase or hold will probably be limited. The exchange also may limit the number of trades you can make per day or week. Next, you're going to take a selfie with a specified logo or written phrase. On most exchanges, you'll have full access to the exchange without going through this additional step. However, some exchanges may limit the size or volume of your trades until you complete this step. Typically, the site will provide a phrase that you have to write out on a piece of paper along with the date. And then you'll take this, a selfie so that both your face and the piece of paper are clearly visible. Some exchanges may send you a unique code that also must be written on the piece of paper. All right, so you've chosen your exchange and you've opened your account and now it's time to complete your first transaction. So to do this, you're gonna start by connecting your method of payment. So after you've verified your identity and opened your account, you'll need to connect that account to the source of traditional money you'll use to buy your cryptocurrency. Depending on the method you choose, it could take three to five days for the connection to be completed. If you use your bank account, this will take, typically take a little bit longer However, it's also more secure and typically offers quicker processing time for purchases. You may be able to connect a credit card instantaneously, but it will be less secure and you'll likely encounter additional processing fees. If you have to wait for your method of payment to connect, watch the markets for a few days and look around the exchange to become more familiar with the interface and transaction processes. Next, you're going to place an order. When you're ready, you click the link to buy cryptocurrency and identify the type of cryptocurrency you want to buy and the amount you want. You don't have to buy a whole coin. Since cryptocurrency is infinitely divisible, you can buy a fraction of a coin. The easiest thing to do is to buy a certain dollar amount without paying attention to how much cryptocurrency you're actually buying. Cryptocurrency is extremely volatile, especially for your first transaction. Don't spend any more money on cryptocurrency than you can afford to lose. Stop and review your information before you send it. Make sure you've entered all the numbers correctly and your decimals are in the right places. Next, you're going to have to wait for your payment to process. You typically won't see the cryptocurrency in your account right away. While processing times depend on the exchange and the method of payment you use, it may take up to a week for your cryptocurrency to appear. So if you're planning on holding your cryptocurrency for investment, you should consider moving it offline as soon as possible rather than leaving it in your exchange account. And right away, be sure to take steps to keep your cryptocurrency safe.